Everyone is opposed to stealing, but are they? We think of stealing as an individual failing, but then why is it so common? Welcome back to the most illegal channel on YouTube. Let's start today by practicing recognizing stealing. Following a lot of elections, especially the one where Trump was ousted, people claim the election was stolen. You know, because the guy who said the words they like lost. They even held up signs like this, saying, stealing is un-American, which is a view divorced from all history. But aside from that, this display showed these people don't realize whoever wins the election they lose. The election would never be in their favor because the system in which the election took place was never theirs to begin with. It wasn't stolen from them because they never had it. In fact, as I've been explaining over this series of videos, the political economic system exists to steal from them. It stole their minds at birth and they never knew to demand them back. It stole their land hundreds of years ago and then rewrote history so they would forget. It keeps stealing their labor, but they keep coming back to work and apologizing for being five minutes late. It snatches away their every last freedom before their eyes, but the news keeps saying it's to keep them safe. And that's all that matters. They don't recognize stealing when they see it because it looks like everything they've been brought up to believe in. And why did they like Trump? Well, one reason is he echoed the immigrant steal jobs rhetoric. So that's another fake stealing made up to cover up real stealing. Stop looking at the people who took your house, your community, your time, and your dignity. Start shitting on the most vulnerable people in society, like migrants whose only crime is they don't have the right stamps and stickers. They're the ones really stealing from you. Did you hear about that illegal immigrant who killed somebody? That's why we need to erect a police state to forcibly remove millions of people from within this vast political boundary. So you see how important it is to distinguish between real stealing and political rhetoric spoken by people who are stealing from you. We've been taught to think of stealing as inherently wrong. When you're teaching a child not to steal, you might appeal to their conscience. If you take that away from your friend, your friend won't be able to play with it anymore. How would you feel? It's an important lesson in sympathy. We learn that it's mean to take from people when they have limited resources. This is basic don't be a dick theory. Your opinion on the morality of the theft should depend on context, like what the thing is, how many of those things the victim has, and how easy it is for them to get more. That's why this simple maxim for interpersonal relations of don't touch each other's stuff is not comparable to stealing while living under systems of violence like the state. Stealing from friends hurts your relationship. Stealing from Walmart hurts no one. When I say stealing is normal, I don't mean shoplifting or carjacking are common. That's what we think of when we think of stealing, illegal theft. That's what the news wants us to believe is a scourge. But however often the poor steal from the rich, the opposite is the legal and cultural norm. When I say stealing is normal, I mean the whole basis of the political economic system under whose shadow the whole world currently lives is theft. Most people don't realize that, which is why I made this series, but they don't realize it because if something's normal, it's invisible. Some people even encourage illegal stealing. No, not me, of course, but some people like the books in the description. Because of how much has been stolen from us already, I see no equivalence between a corporation or a state working on its behalf, stealing your land, poisoning your community, and pushing you into poverty on the one hand, and you stealing from that corporation on the other. 
The former, the initial theft, has destroyed nature and traditional life all around the world and reduced billions of people to poverty. If you wanted to fight to take it back, I'd be sympathetic. Over this series, I've been explaining how robbery is at the root of our current economic relations. You know, rich and poor and whatnot. Everything was once just available. When you take a resource and start to control it privately for profit, that's called commodification. Turning a resource into a commodity to be bought and sold. We used to own things together, on the common. But through force, the commons was commodified and turned into property. One common form of theft is to steal a commodity and sell it, like a shoplifter. But the most significant and least recognized theft is stealing to commodify, like original expropriation, which I identified three videos back as the historical base the wealth of the rich rests on. There's also stealing to decommodify, where you give things back to the commons. In the commons, resources can be managed together to everyone's benefit. But we've lost that world. We live in a world of property, protected by law, and consequently of property crime. The crimes and stealing we talk about in the world of property are the effect of the system of property laws. As Ursula K. Le Guin said in The Dispossessed, to make a thief, make an owner. To create crime, create laws. Now the only legal way to get the things we need is with money. And the only way most of us can get any money is by selling our time and effort. The people who own everything raise their prices whenever they want, which means they demand more of your time and effort to be allowed to have the things they've stolen. The system makes that theft permanent, then criminalizes stealing any of it back and demonizes the people who try. Where do you begin to look for theft in a capitalist system? Is there a root? There's no one institution, it's all of them, but I personally would start with taxes. As I explained at the beginning of this series, taxes are the basis of the economic system. They institute a legal currency everyone has to try to come up with. So we're forced to earn money from the people who have it all. The theft isn't from your paycheck, like right libertarians think, but in the fact of forcing you into this system in the first place. All other theft flows from there. Take wage labor. Many leftists talk about wage theft which is a major problem, but it's a normal, intended outcome of the system. Wage labor itself is the theft. It's forcing you to work for things that are or were available and abundant. It's taking most of your time most days for most of your life. Many jobs also take your physical and mental health too. But you're not allowed to complain, or the rich people who pay you just enough to survive might stop doing that. The point is not that you should never have to work. The point is you should have access to these resources regardless, and have an equal say with everyone else who relies on them. What's more, wages are so low in some places, like mining stuff for our phones, or prison labor, that it's indistinguishable from slavery. Capitalism has made us all part of one big happy labor market. And since corporations are compelled by law to seek out greater returns, many of them realize slavery, over there maybe, is an alternative to livable wages. Slavery is the ultimate theft, stealing people and turning them into property, stealing the full product of their labor, stealing their freedom, dignity, and mind. But even if you're not a slave, you're getting robbed. It's not just the fact that the corporation pays you less than what your labor is worth. It's also the fact that a few people make all the decisions. Decision makers can take back everything they give you. In the 1980s and 90s, people were angry at offshoring, relocating businesses elsewhere because labor and environmental costs were cheaper. 
The workers had built these corporations, but because they didn't own them, they were taken away. They lost jobs and pensions that had been promised to them, and the whole company they had helped build. It was a sign that capitalism didn't reward the most productive people, but merely the most profitable corporations. If you were an owner or an executive, you got richer. If you weren't, you got a middle finger. So what other institutions point to the conclusion that the, the whole system is based on robbery? Again, it's, it's all of them, but we can't ignore the central role the police play. We see police asset seizure as theft, and it is. If you've never heard of civil asset forfeiture, police in many parts of the US can take your stuff if they just claim it's connected with a crime, and they keep the money and spend it arming themselves and buying these dystopian creatures. But let's look deeper through the lens of stealing as the norm. The police exist to enforce systematic theft. The rich take, and the police protect what they take in return for an insignificant piece of the pie. If police catch you stealing, they might steal your freedom and lock you in a cage for months or years, even if you really needed the thing and had no other way to get it. Meanwhile, the rich can own stolen land and live off stolen labor, but if the state they also own says it's okay, the police protect them. Yes, by the way, the land is stolen. Depending where you live, it was probably stolen from the original inhabitants of the land who were killed and imprisoned en masse for daring to fight back. It seems incredibly hypocritical for white people to have a problem with, like, petty theft or illegal immigration when they live on stolen land. What, it's okay to come here to pillage, but not to look for a job? But the empires didn't just steal land. They destroyed the cultures they found on that land. They criminalized expressions of the culture and language until recently. Then they looted those cultures' sacred artifacts and put them in museums where most people from the culture would never see them. How do you think your ancestors got these? You think they paid a fair price? Or did they take it like they took everything else? Land is still being grabbed. Indigenous people were forced to make arrangements with settlers, but settlers are always taking more land and resources. States and corporations are still appropriating space formerly governed by indigenous people for commercial or military purposes, cutting down trees, building pipelines that leak, digging for oil, mining, and dumping toxic waste. Most settlers don't even know what colonialism is, except that it's over. Well, it's not over. It will continue every day we try to ignore it. All these forms of legal looting have been going on at least since Columbus. Everywhere that used to be colonized by European empires still has lots of people working long hours for them, under terrible conditions for pennies. As those of us in the Imperial Corps extract their resources and dump our waste on their land. Natives still face systemic discrimination. So it doesn't matter what an individual does or believes, racism is policy. That makes it easier to steal from them. So the police hang out in neighborhoods of black or native people looking for people to sell to the justice system. They can say, well, they're committing all this crime, but everyone commits crimes. Why do they spend so much effort targeting, you know, the same people they have for hundreds of years? Why is it when black people loot a big box store, people claim they burned the whole city down and say it's okay to shoot them? And if these criminals are so dangerous and we have to be terrified of crime, why are so many people imprisoned for crimes to ward off poverty, like stealing and selling stuff? Why are tens of thousands of people arrested in the US every year just for possessing drugs? And why don't they call any of this stealing? Because stealing is this illegal, taboo, evil thing that only criminals do.
The good stealing, the stealing of common resources that took place over hundreds of years, well, that all became legal. And then it got whitewashed and legitimized in the history books. So it's not stealing, it's the destiny of our people or something. The bad stealing is real stealing, and stealing is bad. Or maybe it's just that the people with all the money and property don't want to lose even a tiny fraction of it, even if the people stealing have nothing, so they indoctrinated everyone to believe in the timeless inviolability of property. I'll leave a link in the description, but anyway, this news story happened near where I live. The cart starts to roll, then the camera. You gonna pay for that? The man recording knows the thief plans to walk out, stealing what appears to be hundreds of dollars worth of product. What he doesn't know is this woman is about to be his partner in fighting crime. After centuries of schooling and capitalist dogma, people with no property voluntarily defend the property of one of the biggest corporations in the world against people stealing groceries. They don't even think about it. They don't have reasons besides, but it's the law, or it's common sense, or the right thing to do, because they've let rich people's values become their own. We've been raised, schooled, and employed all our lives through the threat of punishment. We learn to think of justice as forcing someone to live for years in a cage at our own expense. So naturally, we get the urge to punish others. Someone wronged someone, so they need to go to prison. It's a great way for us to keep social problems on a purely individual basis, as if there were no more factors at play than someone wanted something they didn't deserve. We're taught that the current distribution of wealth is basically fair. It's legal, after all. Therefore, the only way you deserve to have anything is if you work for it, or if your parents work for it. Therefore, stealing anything from anyone is taboo. And as good people, we would never dream of breaking the law, right? Even people who believe in the redistribution of wealth are against illegal theft, because that's the bad redistribution of wealth. So instead, we start by asking for what we need, or to give people in need what they need. We spend years working through existing systems to try to get what the system claims it already provides, what it claims it exists to provide, like money for poor people, clean drinking water, or a channel for us to change things. But that doesn't work, does it? So we try demanding what we want. But despite what we say, we're never really demanding it, because there's no or else. We demand better this and more of that. Okay, and if they say no, just keep demanding. That's not what demanding is. Where's the threat? Are legal means, working within oppressive systems, the only way to get what you want? How long are you going to do that? Are you ever going to pose a threat to their power? Are you going to stop working, stop paying taxes, set up a rival republic? How about just taking what you need, taking what others need? including land and buildings, taking from those who have and giving to those who don't. If you have enough people and a good strategy, you can take it and keep it. People have done it. Ask the Zapatistas. Sometimes I hear people saying, if poor people are taking food for themselves, like the guy in the video, it's not really stealing. Those people are trying to get around the taboo. But the taboo is wrong. It is stealing. It's taking things illegally. The problem is not the stealing. The problem is property. The problem is the legal system erected to punish unauthorized stealing. The system empowers the rich minority to steal from the rest of us and protects everything they take. And it's the propaganda of this system that gives us the taboo against stealing. Piracy is also a form of stealing. I've seen the memes. It's only copying something, right? 
but the law says that's stealing. It's illegal because of intellectual property. The memes would imply stealing IP is fine, but stealing other kinds of property isn't. But what's the difference? They're both things that have been commodified, and commodification means stealing it from the rest of us and holding it for ransom. All property is legal fiction. It's just that intellectual property is more obviously so. But anytime property is created and owned, it can therefore be stolen. So let's not complicate things. Yeah, digital piracy is stealing. So what? Disney really needed another 20 bucks? But then digital piracy doesn't carry the same risks as stealing stuff in person. And if you've been following the news, you'll know that in some places, the risk of the latter is death. Police and even security guards in the US have made it clear they will shoot you if they suspect you of shoplifting, and they probably won't get charged for it. Rich people have no problem killing you to keep their stuff. Please assess any risks carefully. But I can't tell you how to do that. The question I'm asking here is, should you feel bad for stealing? Alternatively, should you get angry at someone else for stealing, like the woman in the video? Well, it depends. When you steal, you're stealing from an owner. Who's the owner? And what's their relationship to what you're stealing? Can someone steal a job? No, because no one owns a job. If your girlfriend leaves you for another guy, did that guy steal your girlfriend? No, because you never owned her. But you could steal a phone. If you steal my phone, well, that sucks because I don't have a lot of money and I kind of need a phone, just like everyone else nowadays. Yeah, you don't literally need one to survive. You just need one to have a social life, to know what's going on in the world, to work, to pay for things, to read, to watch stuff, and for emergencies. So if you take my phone away, I lose all that. At least until I buy a new phone, assuming I even have the money. And I'm a soft target because I don't have my own surveillance cameras and security guards and police forces. As a result, a lot of theft is just us, the propertyless, stealing meager possessions from one another. But ideally, it wouldn't be. Are you guys crooks? But, um, is it wrong to steal a loaf of bread to feed your starving family? No. Well, suppose you got a large starving family. Is it wrong to steal a truckload of bread to feed them? Uh-uh. And what if your family don't like bread? They like cigarettes. I guess that's okay. What's wrong with theft directed at corporations? Taking a phone from me sucks for me, but if you steal a phone from an Apple store, you're taking a phone that no one uses or relies on. You're stealing from Apple shareholders, most or all of whom have way more money than you. And the thing about modern publicly traded corporations is, there are so many shareholders, you're stealing a small fraction of a penny from each of them. Do you still feel bad? But by stealing from a corporation, you're doing so much more. You're giving back to the community. Thieves, after all, are a part of the community. Corporations are not. Stealing and looting are just taking goods that should be for everyone and redistributing them to the commons. Looting tends to be much more targeted and strategic and must, much less random and chaotic than the news might have you believe, as you can read about in the books in the description. Usually when people loot, they're just taking things back from much bigger looters like Target and Best Buy who just want to extract wealth and cheap labor from the community, and who incidentally are the reason all the smaller businesses that used to exist went bankrupt. Well, getting looted or shoplifted from is one way they could give back a minuscule percentage of what they've taken. If I could sum up this series as we come to the end, I would say commodification is theft. And it's theft from everyone, rather than just from rich people. 
what was no one's, available to anyone who needed it, is now the exclusive property of someone who doesn't need it. When we steal, as stealing is commonly defined, we're decommodifying. We're breaking the sanctity of property and spitting on our involuntary relationship to it. So commodification is theft, and theft is decommodification. See what I did? Anyway, that wraps up this series. Thanks for staying till the end. I will take up no more of your time. Well, maybe 30 more seconds. <laughs>